Hello, this is Mo for Kai's channel again, and it's episode three. Well, before we start anything, I really, really, really want to appreciate you guys for watching my videos and for those that you know sent comments or you know just liking or just words of encouragement. I really, really want to thank you because you know they really do go a very long way. And I hope we all completed our assignment for last week. Um, and you have started doing things the way you want people to do them to you. Those of you that have not been able to pray the prayer, well, those of us that still have to kind of think about things, um, I hope we are doing better and that, you know, now we have more free conscience to pray that prayer. Hallelujah. All right, so today we are going to be talking about um, staying woke. Our uh, yeah, topic is stay woke. It's really about diligence is what it is. And we are going to be drawing our text from the book of <clears throat> Matthew chapter 25 from verse 14 to 30. But I'm not going to read the whole um, you know, verse. I'm just going to summarize what you know, was in that verse. So what happened in that um, verse, Matthew 25, verse 13 to 40, is that, um, you know, a man was going on a journey, and then he called his servants to, you know, give them, distribute his wealth, basically, or give them, you know, what to do. So he gave to one servant five bags of gold. Um, some other Bible verses refer to it as talent. Mine, my NIV version Bible refers to it as a bag of gold. Okay, so he gave to one servant five bags of gold. He gave another servant two bags of gold, and then he gave the third one one bag of gold. And he gave each one of the three um, according to their abilities. So what happened was the one with five bags of gold went and you know made extra five bags of gold. The one with two bags of gold went, used it, and made two extra bags of gold. And then the one with one bag of gold, he went and hid his own inside the ground. So when the servant and the master came, and the master called all three of them and said, ah, see that I gave five bags of gold. What have you done with it? He said, oh, master, this, 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 I made five extra bags of gold. The master said, oh, well done, you know, my servant. And said, you know, I will reward you by making you master of, you know, something. Then the one with two bags of gold, what have you done with it? He said, oh, master, I've made two extra bags of gold. And the master said, oh, well, well done, my servant, you know, made you master of something. Then the one with bag, one bag of gold, I want to read exactly what he said in the book of you know matthew 25 verse 24 exactly he said then the man who had received one bag of gold came master he said i knew that you are a hard man investing where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed so i was afraid and went out and hid your gold in the ground see here what is see see here is what belongs to you then his master replied, you wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. Well then, you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers so that when I returned, I would have received it back with interest. So take the bag of gold from him and give it to the one who has 10 bags. For whoever has will be given more and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them and throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. A question for us today is, where is your own bag of gold? Now, some people have five bags of gold, or two, or seven. How many, about, how many talents God has given you? But let's get down to the basic one bag of gold. What are you doing with that one bag of gold that God has given to you? Did you go and dig your own in the ground? I'm like, eh, 
you know, I don't know what I'm supposed to do with this one bag of gold, so I'm just going to put it in the ground. You know, I don't know what I'm supposed to do with this one talent, you know. And that's how a lot of us are in this life. You know, we compare ourselves a lot. You know, they gave this one five five talents. You know, she has money, she's rich, she's this, she's that, she's this. And so she has all the, you know, this one. Mm, I mean, she doesn't really have that much money. But eh, she's still brilliant and this and this. So she can do it. But me, what do I have? So that's why I'm like this. Mm -hmm. So who told you that that one thing that you have, it cannot make it sense with you? Who told you that that one talent has God, that God has given to you, you cannot multiply it and make it to? That's the problem with a lot of us. We have so many excuses, so many excuses, so many complaints. You know, you're at work and your boss has given you work to do or projects to do. And you're like, ah, no, you mm -hmm. only paid me this small money, but he wants me to do all this work. But the truth of the matter is that you accepted the job. So you accepted the job and you knew how much they were going to pay you when you accepted the job. So why can't you do your job diligently? You want to start a business or you are doing a business. You are a tailor, you are a hairdresser, you are a baba, you have a company, whatever it is, you know. But you are doing half job. You are not producing quality. Because what? Because you feel like, okay, you know, and it's only for this amount of money. So we're only going to do this thing for this kind of money. But you know what the truth is? The truth is that you probably fail, but you're just going to get what you bought back. You are not going to make any profit. There's a difference between a diligent person and just a regular worker. Okay. Two people can be in the exact same company working. One person comes to work, does what they ask him to do, and leaves. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay? But there's another person comes to work, does his work, helps other people, goes the extra mile, does above and beyond, and helps the company make better profit. Now, when promotion comes, who do you think that the boss is going to promote? If you are the boss, who will you promote? Of course, it's the person that is putting in extra effort. And that's the thing with all of us. We have to put in extra effort in whatever it is that we have decided that we are going to do. As long as you have put your name on something that I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. You have put your name. I'm going to do this. Then you need to put in 200% work on it. It doesn't matter how small. Because guess what? When the master comes to reward people, you are going to be rewarded for the work that you have done. You know, another thing with a lot of us is that, you know, when we start doing something, you know, we put all our effort because, you know, you don't have, so you have to work. So you work and you do everything you have to do. And then when you make profit or when you are a little bit more comfortable, then what do you do? You relax and you sit back. Then all the efforts you stop. All the hard work you stop, all the extra things you stop doing. Well, when you stop doing all that, then all the extras that came with what you were doing before also stops. You know, I'm not saying, you know, work forever or work your head off. No, no, no. I'm saying if you can't do all those things you used to do, then start delegating some of those things. But make sure that they do get done. You might be at home and in the comfort of your house and still be working. You know, you don't have a job, but you have hands to work. You don't have a job, but you have hands to work. You have time to bond with your family. The basic thing about this is whatever you're doing, find that one bag of gold. Find that one talent that God has given to you and look for how you can make it blossom. Okay? If it's selling you want to sell, sell well and sell diligently and sell honestly. If it's education you want to do, study extra. You know, wake up and study. When other people are playing, go and study. I want to read a Bible verse for you in the book of Proverbs chapter 6. And it's Proverbs chapter 6 from verse 6 to 11. And it says, go to the ants, you sluggard. Consider its ways and be wise. It has no commander, 
no overseer or ruler, yet it stores its provisions in summer and gathers its food at harvest. How long will you lie there, you sluggard? When will you get up from your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, and poverty will come on you like a thief and scarcity like an army. A little sleep, a little slumber, and poverty will come on you. God forbid, nobody, none of us will be, will be, will be poor in Jesus' name. Nobody will not come on any one of us in Jesus' name. But it's the truth of the matter. How long are you going to fold your hands? The Bible says, get up from your sleep. Get up. Anybody that knows me knows I like to sleep. But the truth of the matter is those days when I actually get up early and I do things, I you know, <laughs> do all the laundry, all the cooking I have to do, call all the people I have to call, run all the errands I have to run, study what I have to study, I feel very useful. In fact, it's like it's a new day. Don't just lay back and sleep and be like, you know, and eh, the situation of this country ah, is not helping matters. Is it? Eh, but what can you do? What is your one bag of gold? Because guess what? The Bible stands and the word of God stands and God is going to honor his word. So when you have done all you can, when you have truly done all that you can, you are putting 200% and you are not getting anything if you don't get any reward for that. That's when you rise up and you be to go and say, God, ha. You are the one that told me that if I do this, this is what will happen. So now that is not doing, I want you to stand by your word and, you know, manifest your word in my life. But if you have not done it, and you have not used your one bag of gold, you have left it in the ground, then you rise up and go and meet God. God, you know this, you know that. God is going to ask you, okay, I did give you one bag of gold. What did you do with it? The Bible says you give them according to their abilities. God knows your ability and that is what he has given you power for. You know, maybe he's really not giving you that job on purpose because he wants you to sit back and think and use your creativity because that's where your talent lies. Because that's where you'll be successful. The Bible says, consider the ants and their ways. It has no master, no overseer, and yet it gathers its own food. Be your own self-motivator. Be diligent. Be hardworking. Okay? Next time you see an ant, don't just kill it. Pick it up and put it on the table and be like, okay, ant, let's, you know, let's have a discussion here. Teach me your ways. Okay? They are wise, as small as they are. Don't, don't really go and talk into the ants before they think something is wrong with you. But really, let's be diligent in all that we do. Let's Let's be putting in a hundred percent effort, a hundred percent hard work, not just complaining. I know, you know, yes, things are not fair, and I know all fingers are not equal, it's the truth of the matter. But guess what? God has given you at least one bag of gold that He wants you to make into two. So sit back and think, think in your head. What where where is my one bag of gold? Where did I bury my one bag of gold? I need to bring it out. I need to bring it out. Because the truth of the matter is that person that is diligent and stays diligent will continue to get more projects, will continue to get more rewards. And that's exactly what happened in the Bible. The Bible says that the master took that one talent from that person that didn't make a gain and gave it to the one with 10 talents. Because he has shown himself to be capable. Hallelujah. So show yourself capable. And you'll see how God is going to continue to reward you. Let us use what God has given us wisely. Let us use our talents wisely. Go and find where you hid your one bag of gold. And may God help all of us in Jesus' name. Amen. So as usual, you know, send me an email or leave a comment. Or if you really have something you want us to talk about, then just you know, send me an email or just comment about it. And... Um, we will see you all again next week. Until then, remain blessed. Bye.